Hello, this is Jody Mayberry, and you are listening to the Catalyst Sale Podcast, but I'm doing something a little different. Mike Simmons changed the intro, the introduction that I've given you for quite a while now. This is the first time I've been on an episode again since Mike changed the intro. So I just want to acknowledge that, that Mike, a new intro again, this is like the fourth one. Well, like Jeff Noel says, when you change what you see, what you see changes. So I thought we'd change what you hear and maybe what you hear changes. Oh, I like that. I'm actually a fan of changing intros and uh, on my show, I've done it several times. I just like to give you a hard time. I know you do. You do like <laughs> to give me a hard time. Well, yes. Let's make this official. I'll do the introduction and then we can do an episode. Perfect. Welcome to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. Sales is another word for problem solving. We all have problems. Oh, let me try that part again. We all have problems we are looking to solve, and we know there are solutions out there. One big challenge for business leaders, entrepreneurs, people starting their own business or transitioning into another is sales. Why do we struggle with sales? It could be due to confidence, comfort, and just not wanting to be salesy. We want to help our customers. We know we can, but we complicate the process. This podcast is designed to help people like you improve at sales and problem solving through process, practice, frameworks, and thinking. I'm your host, Jody Mayberry, and I'm with the founder of Catalyst Sale, Mike Simmons. This episode is brought to you by the Catalyst Sale Game Plan, approach to goal setting and execution. Head to Catalyst Sale slash game for more information. Well, I made it. Wow, Mike. that is long. And I would have hit fast forward like three times to get through that, Jody. Man, that's bru- that's that was that's brutal when you listen to it being read in real time. Yeah, that's a long one. You added uh, some new content. It was like reading a blog post. It was like reading a blog post. And that URL is catalystsale.com forward slash game. Catalystsale.com forward slash game. So, and we'll include uh, links, which Jen really likes. One of the things that Jen likes best is when I say that we'll include links in the show notes, because then she's got to go out and find the links for the show notes. So you're welcome, Jen. Well, Jen did tell Mike that that was a long introduction and Mike didn't listen. And (laughs) so there it is. But I did make one change. I, where it said people, it originally said folks. And I just, for some reason, I just feel so awkward saying that word. Not that it's a weird word. It just feels weird coming out of my mouth. It rolls out wrong. You be you, Jody. I'll be me. I'm not scared to say it though, but that does take us to the topic of our episode. Being that is scared. a heck of a segue. Oh, Look at I, you go, man. Yeah, I like doing that. That's my new hobby is just finding clever segues. So our episode is about fear. Mike Simmons, he tells us sales is not scary. But it can be for some people, Mike. So let's talk about it. Well, think about it. Like, what is it that makes something scary? Why do you get scared about something? Well, people are scared of the dark, I think, because they don't know what's out there. They don't know what's out there. There's this unknown. There's this thing that's out there that you're uncertain about. You can't see, you can't touch, you can't feel. And you kind of, you start to have these gaps. So you create this own story in your head about how horrible this thing is going to be, or how bad a rejection is going to be, or what if somebody says no, or any of these other things. So you, you get this, you get in this mode of unknown uncertainty, and then all of a sudden, yeah, things get a little bit scary. And, and then how do you, how do you overcome some of those fears? I like that point because it was either Mark Twain or my granny talked about all the, the worries he's had, and most of them weren't even real, or that's the same with fears. Quite often we're scared of something that hasn't happened yet. And we've made it up in our head. I can see this happening in sales. We're scared to make the ask or make a call or get rejected, which I've never in a sales call, Mike, perhaps you've had an incident that turned out bad. I've never been physically hurt by a rejection in a sales call. I have, I have never been punched in the face in a sales call. I've been punched in the face a couple of other times. But not in a not in a sales call, not in a sales call. And the last time I got punched in the face, I probably had it coming. I can bet that is true. Yes. So we talked about dark, being afraid of the dark. How can you use that as an example of overcoming the fear of a sales call? Well, I mean, the one way to you know, 
overcome fear of the dark is to turn the lights on. So, and actually, I don't know that that overcomes the fear of the dark, but it gets rid of the dark. So you can get a, a flashlight, you can turn a light on, and now you can see those things that are around you. So a flashlight becomes a tool that you can use to get a better understanding of something, understand your the environment you're operating in, and then make some choices based on things that you now know or things that you perceive. So let's get a couple of tools that we can use out there to help improve our likelihood of success, reduce the chance of the unknown. And we've talked about a number of these tools and they're made available on the Catalyst Sales site. Your your account plan template, your call plan template, your territory plan template. You know, let's focus on the call plan because that's one of the first things that people have a how do I initiate a conversation with someone? Well, you know, let's understand who we're talking to. Let's identify what we think their objectives are, anticipate their objectives, know what our objectives are, what we'd like to accomplish, and have a clear list of desired next steps, and then build around that. So uh, use your tool like a flashlight to shed some light and start to see some things. And that's a good way to at least to overcome some fear relative to the unknown. The next thing that happens is once you start doing it, once you start putting these tools into practice, once you start working through your process, you start to get more comfortable because now there's less uncertainty about what's going to happen if I ask the wrong question or what's going to happen when someone says no. Do they actually slam a door in my face or do they punch me in the nose or do you know something else like hit me over the head with a frying pan? You know, like those things. Actually, I never did the door-to-door sales type stuff. So I've never had someone slam a door in my face in a selling environment. I've had a door slammed in my face before as well, but not in a in a sales environment. The real, reality is you learn from those experiences and you and you move you move forward. The example I was thinking of as Mike was talking, a camping trip to Yellowstone National Park with my family. My daughter was a little intimidated or scared to walk from our campsite in the Mammoth Campground to the bathroom. And so I took her as her guide to just show her, look, th- this is actually how you do it. You don't even you can do this without a flashlight. You just have to know the route. You saw the route in the daytime. You can do it in the dark. It's the exact same route. Nothing changes, only it's dark. And you know what it should feel like under your feet. It feels like you're stepping on a bush. You probably walked off the path. And those are a couple of things that help having the guide and having the experience. And if you've run through it enough, you've done the tools Mike talks about, you know what it should feel like under your feet. You know if you've gone off the path. Yeah. And I I think one of the things that you really highlighted that's pretty cool is the importance of these senses. So you have these senses where you can kind of feel where things are a little bit different than what you expected. So if I'm out there and I'm on a trail and maybe I'm, you know, I notice that things are a little bit squishier than they should be, or when I step down, my legs get wet because something splashed up. I'm maybe going in the wrong direction, especially if there wasn't any water. Now it could just be a puddle. So I observe, take stake of what is going on around me and then adjust. And in the context of these conversations that you'll have with customers, they could be existing customers, they could be prospects of yours. You're going to ask some questions. You're going to engage in conversation. If they are giving back and they're trading information and sharing information, things are probably moving in the right direction. If they're not giving you anything, if they're answering things with one word answers, yes, no, maybe, no, they're not providing any context something's wrong. So your senses should bring to light that maybe I'm not talking to the right person, or maybe I've caught them at a wrong time. Something else has happened and they've got another priority. You take in each of these inputs that are happening, and then you start to apply your thought process and adjust. And if you adjust in a way that doesn't get you to the result that you're looking for, then maybe they're just not the right person to be talking to at that point in time. But I think that piece around taking in your environment and knowing what things should feel like, what things should smell like, what things should taste like, what things should sound like, then you can uh, work to quickly learn and overcome some of those fears. Yeah, that's good stuff. When I was a park ranger, I would almost never use a flashlight on patrol at night because it always gave an advantage because my eyes were always adjusted to the dark. So 
it's that that was part of what I was trying to teach my daughter that you don't you don't need a flashlight. You follow the shapes and all of that, and it it does a, apply not only to the senses but the guide part too. That sometimes you need someone to just show you this is what you're looking for. This is how you do it, and that's what Mike has done with what he offers through Catalyst Sale. All the templates, even the the game plan. That's a guide showing you how. To I know the game plan is a little different than what we're talking about here because we're talking sales, but it's still the same piece. It's a guide showing you this is how you do it. This is what to expect. This is what to look for. So talk about that, Mike, the role of having someone that's been through it before help you get over the scary part of sales. Yeah. I mean, the having someone who's gone through the path before, they can share some experience. They aren't necessarily creating your experience, though. So it doesn't take the place of the personal experience that you will need to gain in order to overcome your fears and understand that you can actually do these things. However, they can be a set of training wheels. You know, think about back when you learned how to ride a bike. I mean, the first time you learned how to ride a bike, you might have had a, one of those bikes that had uh, had training wheels hooked up to the back tire, and it could, you know could deal with you getting out of balance and and catch you before you fall. Well, then at some point in time, you take the training wheels off and you get the confidence that you can go and do this thing, this thing on your own. Or maybe you've gone out and you've bowled. And uh, as a little kid bowling, you had those gutter rails that get that make it so that you don't put the ball in the gutter. And these guide rails, these guide posts can help keep you moving toward the general objective. At some point, though, you've got to lose the rails. If you want to be creative and really thrive as, as your own personal self, and whether it's this role or another role, whether you're in a sales role or you're just, as we said in the introduction, your sales is another word for problem solving. You're just solving problems. Once you remove those guideposts, those guide rails, you can start to get really creative in the approach that you take. You start to thrive, but you've got to start somewhere. And starting with a guide, whether you go back to the Donald Miller stuff related to the story, you start with a guide. That guide can help you overcome a number of the villains that are out there, or problems that exist out there. And if they were easy to overcome on your own, they wouldn't really be villains and you wouldn't be struggling with them. So to build on Jody's point on the goal setting and execution course, the game plan, that's all that is. It's goal setting and execution with a simplified approach. And for whatever reason, so many of us struggle with that goal setting and execution piece. It might be because we we struggle with being really deliberate about creating goals, or we try to do too many activities that align with those goals, or we don't measure the things that matter. And that's what we designed that program to help people with. So you can use the program as a guide. You can use these tools that we've talked about on the podcast as a guide. And you can use all of the people that we've brought on in previous episodes as your own personal guides or personal catalysts as you look to break through some of the challenges you're running into. So don't be, uh, it's just okay to be scared because you get scared, your senses go up. You're kind of acutely aware of the things that are around you, but that fear should not get in the way of you going out and trying things. Because if you try things and you learn that you're really good at some of those things, you can be super creative and super successful in the stuff that you're working on. Great point to wind down on that even if you use a guide like Mike, he's done this a lot. He's been through it all. So it's easy for Mike to say, look, it's simple. You just take these seven steps as an example. But it's so different when you're taking those seven steps for the first time or last time you got to step two and you failed and now that makes step two really scary for you. So yes, you can use a guide. Yes, you can use tools. But part of it, you only get around by actually doing it. You have to go out and do the work. Don't just talk about the work. Don't just think about the work. Go out and do the work. Do the work. Fantastic, Mike Simmons. Well, thank you, Mike. This was a, a great topic. I'm so glad we got to talk about it. And thank you for listening to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. <music>